Good evening from the Rooster Observatory. Six months ago, I already had the dwarf and I had just ordered the sea star. I conducted a comparison of the technical specifications of both telescopes. In this video, having used them both uh, three weeks in the case of the sea star and a bit longer in the case of the dwarf, I'm conducting a functional comparison of uh, the main features that uh, I have found myself using. Uh, let me start with uh, the technical specs first. The aperture, dwarf is about an inch, uh, sea star is about two inches. So that gives the sea star four times more light capturing capability per frame. Focal length, 100 millimeters for the dwarf, 254 the sea star, uh, giving them f over uh, four and f over five roughly. Uh, very comparable in that sense. The sensors, both Sony sensors, in the case of the Dwarf, it's the IMX 415. For the, the Sea Star, it's the IMX 452. Sensor resolution, uh, this is where they differ. The Dwarf 2 is an 8 megapixel sensor that's on the telephoto lens, and the Sea Star is 2 megapixels. Uh, that's supposed to make a big difference. In the current uh, publicly released version of the app, uh, the Dwarf 2 uh, mandates 2 times 2 binning for deep sky objects, whereas C-Star allows 1 by 1. By one. And uh, for planetary and for the sun, uh, Dwarf 2 allows 1 by 1 uh, imaging. Pixel size, uh, that is the equalizer. 1.45 versus 2.9. So if you go with 2 times 2 binning, the sensors become essentially identical in terms of what they are doing, both in terms of light capturing and in terms of uh, resolution. The app versions that I tested are uh, 1.21 for the Dwarf and 1.90 for the Sea Star. These are the two uh, publicly available apps now. Connection, both initiate the connection in Bluetooth mode and then switch to 5G Wi-Fi and both permit uh, station mode so that uh, the telescope can join your home network and you can access it pretty much from any computer in the house. Uh, both have an alt as mount. However, the Dwarf 2 lends itself readily to be mounted equatorially you can mount the sea star equatorially, but it will complain that it is not level and it's up to you to ignore that. I don't know how well it tracks in equatorial mode. I have not tested it. I tested the Dwarf 2 in equatorial mode and uh, I fall back on using equatorial mode with Dwarf fairly often. One of my biggies, the tripod is optional for the Dwarf 2. It will sit happily on a flat surface without a tripod. Uh, sea star does require the tripod. There is no internal compass on the Dwarf 2. The Sea star has an internal compass, even though it mixes its north with its south often. But uh, that allows it to uh, quickly find targets without the need for initial plate solving if you start by pointing it north. There is an internal leveler also in the Sea Star, but not on the Dwarf. Uh, both have the little uh, oil bulb, if you will, uh, on the tripod, so you see what is level. But uh, the Sea Star consults its internal leveler whenever you are imaging uh, sun or uh, moon. And the uh, first time I went to image the moon, it asked me to go through a calibration of that internal compass. Uh, and the leveler. Both can read the GPS from the tablet, uh, although I've never been able to convince the Dwarf 2 to read the GPS from my tablet, so I enter it manually, which is no big deal. Having read the local GPS, uh, the Sea Star pulls the local weather. Uh, the weather itself is no big deal. Look out of the window. If it's cloudy and rainy, then don't put the telescope outside. But the local weather becomes useful when it's a matter of uh, the moon, phases of the moon, uh, when it is rising, when it is setting. 
and uh, that can impact in many ways uh, selection of uh, deep sky objects. Big surprise, the first time I put the sea star out, uh, it does not require initialization or calibration. Uh, goes looking for a target and then when it thinks it is looking at the target, it takes a picture, plate solves it and then determines where it is in the sky. Uh, Dwarf 2 has a very effective calibration system whereby it uh, turns left, turns right, looks up, looks down, and then uh, uh, takes uh, three frames at a small angle uh, of azimuth uh, variation, and that allows it to calibrate, and it does an extremely good job in calibration. The target catalog in the Dwarf 2, in the current public version of the app, the target catalog is very limited. The C star has an extensive target catalog and uh, a very pleasing interface. However, they do differ in manual mode. C star does not allow entering uh, right ascension and declination. Dwarf 2 does. However, the C star has a sky atlas that allows you to uh, surf the sky. And you can click uh, on any point in the sky and it will go there. Big advantage of Dwarf, it has two cameras, a wide angle and a telephoto. Seastar has only one camera. I have used the combination of wide and telephoto many, many times to find elusive targets. Orientation, biggie. <laughs> it takes getting used to Seastar's vertically oriented sensor. Uh, I live in a horizontal world. Uh, Dwarf 2 obviously takes horizontal pictures. The field of view is uh, 3 degrees by uh, 1 and change for the Dwarf 2, 180 minutes by 100 minutes. Whereas for the Sea Star, it's 43 minutes by 77 minutes. Uh, please note that the moon is uh, about 30 minutes, the sun is about 30 minutes. So it fits very comfortably. Uh, with the C star and it fits with the uh, room to spare with the dwarf. Field of view in my mind is not a big consideration of goodness. There are large targets like Andromeda and Dwarf 2 does much better and there are many more smaller targets like the Dumbbell Nebula and the Ring Nebula where the C star does a little bit better. Exposure the C star has fixed exposure of 10 seconds. Dwarf, you can program it from uh, 10 microseconds all the way up to 15 seconds. Uh, same with gain. Uh, C star is fixed at 90 dB. Dwarf, you can uh, pick anything you want between 0 and 240 dBs. Uh, that proved to be a frustration when trying to image planets with the C star. Uh, they are way overexposed and I could not bring the exposure down. Uh, yes, neither telescope is intended for planetary observation, but it uh, would have been nice to look at uh, Saturn or Jupiter and see something other than just a big white blob. In addition to exposure gain and uh, white balance, uh, Dwarf 2 has image controls for brightness, uh, contrast, saturation and hue. Uh, C-Star does not offer any image controls. Uh, Dwarf also offers a histogram that you can manipulate during deep sky object stacking, uh, which is not available on the C-Star. Built-in filters. Dwarf 2 allows you to switch an infrared filter on or off, pass or cut, whereas the C-Star has a filter wheel and uh, you can choose among uh, infrared, uh, light pollution, or dark. Actually, you cannot choose dark. Uh, it takes the darks automatically. External filters. The dwarf has a holder, a magnetic holder, and you can pretty much put any one-inch filter on it. The Sea star comes with a solar neutral density filter that you can uh, squeeze into the aperture, but that's about it for now. Dark frames, bar none, this is my favorite feature of the C star. It takes darks automatically at the start of every session. 
And within a session at the start of every target, if it thinks it needs another set of darks. Dwarf 2, uh, put the machine inside its bag, put the bag inside the suitcase, put the suitcase inside the dark room, turn all the lights off, and take the darks. And try to remember to do it before every session. Autofocus. Dwarf 2 has very fast autofocus, very effective when it comes to the moon and the sun. Uh, same with the C star. The C star's autofocus is a lot slower, almost in order of magnitude slower than the autofocus on the dwarf. However, when it comes to deep sky objects, C star does an excellent job. And in the current version of the software, uh, Dwarf 2 will overshoot and uh, leave you having to do the focus manually, uh, which is not always a good thing to do. Both of them done, uh, have done miserably in finding the sun. Uh, the sea star will uh, go straight through the sun and then tells you it has failed. Uh, a dwarf with the two camera system allows me to find the sun on the big camera and then uh, go to it, uh, no big deal. The go to DSO targets, Dwarf 2 is very, very quick. Uh, the C star is slow, but it is good. Uh, not only does it find the target, it will also center it. It will go through extreme pains to center the target. Uh, Dwarf 2 does not bother center the target. It just gets it and uh, let's get on. Stacking overhead. E when I put them both at 10 second exposures and uh, let it run, the stacking overhead between the time it takes an exposure, a frame, a sub, and the next one is about 2 seconds in Dwarf. Actually, it is just under 2 seconds, 1.4 to 1.6. Uh, for the Sea Star, on a very good day, it is still about 4 seconds. So it takes a bit longer uh, to capture as many frames on the Sea Star than it does on the Dwarf. At the end of the night, the stacked image in the Dwarf is on the SD card. Uh, the C star, the stacked image is on both the SD card and uh, whatever tablet or cell phone you are using, smartphone to control it. Field rotation. When used in Alt as mode, the field rotation is more visible on the Dwarf 2 because the top and the bottom are a lot wider than the right and the left. Uh, so the, the vertical orientation on the C star makes field rotation uh, a lot less visible. Uh, it has not been uh, obvious to me on any of the targets that I've imaged over the past three weeks. Both have two heaters of sorts. Uh, the Dwarf 2, by turning on CPU performance mode, it heats up the place. And the C-Star, you can turn it on or off. In neither of the two telescopes have I observed any dew forming on the lens, even in extremely humid days in the past couple weeks. Zoom. Uh, that is a nice feature of the C star. You double click on an image, it will zoom in. Uh, Dwarf 2, uh, use your two fingers on the screen of the tablet and you can zoom in and out as much or as little as you want. Dwarf 2 allows tracking by drawing a green box around the target, whether it is the moon uh, during daytime or whether it is in uh, landscape mode and you're tracking. Uh, a fast moving animal like a turtle, which I tracked all afternoon in my backyard. Uh, sea star does not have that feature, but it does well tracking uh, the sun during daytime. Uh, have not tested its tracking on the moon during daytime yet. Solar tracking. Sea star is very good. Uh, dwarf is so so. I found myself having to correct its uh, aim at the sun repeatedly. When you turn it off, the camera stays open on the Dwarf 2. And many times I found myself grabbing it with putting my fingers, fingerprints straight on the lenses. Uh, the C star, when you turn it off, uh, it will uh, shut down completely and it will park facing north with the camera with the lens hidden. The Dwarf 2 has remote on off that allows you to either shut it down or restart it. The C star has only a shutdown. 
Uh, I have used the restart feature many times on the Dwarf. When it misbehaves, I just uh, restart it, not knowing where the problem is. Uh, the first rule of computer is turn it off and turn it back on. In the case of a C star, I have to get up and go out to return, turn it back on. My favorites. Uh, this is strictly a functional evaluation. I did not talk about the quality of images or how fat the stars are or how bloated or how elongated. Uh, beauty is in the eye of the beholder in most cases. But here we're talking about functionally. Uh, these are my top uh, six or seven favorites. Uh, the tripod. You have no idea how much I like putting the dwarf on my windowsill uh, without a tripod. And I am imaging at the moment's notice whether it's day or night. Uh, the C-Star will not work without a tripod. Manual mode. I like them both. Uh, the ability to find the right ascension and declination of a transitional object like a comet and entering it in Dwarf 2, it has been good finding it. In the Sea Star, uh, I go to the Sky Atlas and I drag it to roughly where I think it's going to be, and uh, more often than not, I find myself in the right place. Unfortunately, the Sky Atlas is uh, graduated in uh, altitude and azimuth, not in uh, RA deck, so I have to do that translation elsewhere. Image controls. Uh, exposure gain and white balance manually set on the dwarf is a biggie. Uh, many times I'd like to change my exposure by a little bit one way or another. I don't have that option. At I don't have much of that option on the C star. It does allow, it does allow some uh, uh, gain control, but not much. Dark frames. The ability to take dark frames at the start of every session is by far, in my mind, the biggest plus of uh, all 48 parameters that I've compared today. Uh, the C star takes them automatically. I don't have to worry about them. And the close second is the excellent autofocus when it comes to deep sky objects that the C star has. Uh, Remote on off, I like the ability to restart the machine remotely so I don't have to sit next to it. And finally, last but not least, I like the fact that when I turn it off, it will park facing north. Actually, the telescope is facing north, but uh, the lens is covered in park mode. So this is it for now, a quick uh, functional comparison from uh, my perspective, first-hand use of the two machines. If you want to look at uh, a comparison of uh, my first session using both Sea uh, star and Dwarf 2, uh, I have a video in which I compared uh, Andromeda uh, and the Triangulum Galaxies M31 and M33 and the moon. Before I leave, there is one more parameter that uh, I'd be remiss if I did not mention. When it comes to imaging the moon, the dwarf too images it in what appears to be in color. So there are blues and browns in there. Uh, the sea star appears to image it in a scales of gray. Uh, both do an outstanding job in imaging the moon, but I have to do some more research to see whether the sea star is indeed uh, monochrome in that case, and the dwarf is color. So that's it for this comparison. Uh, I wish you clear skies, and uh, we'll see you again. So long from the Roosterin Observatory.